It's, uh, it's a normal spring and it's uh, going really well. I'm really pleased um, with uh, five practices in. Um, you know, I, I'm excited. I think that there's a reason to be optimistic. Um, we're getting a lot of reps with a lot of young kids and um, just, uh, just really pleased, pleased with our staff, pleased with uh, the energy and, and kind of the leadership I see on both sides of the ball. Just uh, re really pleased. Damien, you want to get us started? Yeah, sure. Uh, Coach, uh, I saw on the uh, coach's uh, uh, list that Tanner Burns has added a responsibility as outside linebackers coach. Um, uh, what what prompted the move, and is there something else in store down the line? Yeah, truthfully, he's always had a, a little bit of responsibility with that. Uh, but Corey uh, last year kind of wanted all three of the uh, – whatever we're calling the safeties, outside backer, uh, that nickel Sam and the and the two roof players. He kind of wanted them all in the same room. And Jack's a little different. Uh, Jack really thinks it's important. And Scott agreed that uh, if that, that outside position, that nickel Sam backer, um, DB, whatever you hybrid, whatever we're calling him, if he had uh, separate meeting time and more individual uh, time just with a single coach and and uh, Tanner's uh, very qualified to do that so that's uh, that that's the purpose behind it and so that position is like what we saw with a Quentin Reese and a Juwan Treadwell play is that correct? exactly it and uh, Schuyler's uh, playing there also right now really pleased with all three of those um, uh, to this point. Coach, speaking of Skyler, he's one of several newcomers you have in that backfield, defensive backfield, him and Jalen Jimerson, Jerron Lowe, uh, Rahimi, the Juco transfer. Um, you know, what have you seen out of those guys? In yeah. I don't want to be uh, – I mean, we're five days in, so I don't – certainly don't want to uh, – I'm, I'm excited. I think we've improved ourselves. I think we run better. Uh, I think one of the hardest uh, pe people to guard that I've ever coached is, is Douglas. And, um, you know, I tell you, Schuyler and some of those guys are running with him, which is impressive. And, you know, Jimerson and Rocket and Lowe. And I tell you, even Dejon Anthony has been impressive. I, I, I just uh, – I think we've definitely added depth and, uh, and certainly uh, are optimistic uh, that we have a chance to be better. It was about this time last year when uh, COVID started becoming a, you know, was designated a global pandemic. And uh, I think by Friday, that was about your last practice of the spring. Yeah. Um, Thank you, right. It seems like we either got four or five in last year. I can't remember. It seems like it was four, but but I think we're getting ready. We got five in. Todd's telling me so. We got five in. So it was yeah, it'd be this time last year. And as you look back on what how the years, you know, what this past year has been like, what can you take away from that, and uh, how have the players responded through? The adversity they had to go through, all the testing protocols, living within the bubble, uh, you know, wondering whether the schedule is going to be the same from week to week, uh, you know, changing schedules throughout the year because you know that traditionally doesn't happen. And you know, how you know from one year to the next, how what what have you seen as this has unfolded? Well, I think it's made us stronger here. I think it's made us. Uh... Uh, hopefully more aware of uh, the gratefulness that we should live with uh, for the things that we do have and the resources that we do have here to even have a bubble and to the support we had to continue doing what we love to do. And um, now once we decided to do what we love to do, it certainly came with this uh, uh, set of challenges. Uh, and I thought uh, that our team and staff and administration and academics and everybody just had this mentality of don't blink and we can't worry and get caught up with what we can't control. And I, I think that's going to pay dividends down the road in life for everyone that has experienced it and has come out hopefully the other side of it without uh, life-altering circumstances. And my heart 
certainly goes out to those that, that had the, uh, the, the situations that, that caused uh, gr great grief and pain. Um, but for our family here, that was, uh, we, we, we didn't experience a lot of that. And um, now I hope we're toward the end of it. You know, I think there was a lot of hurt. I was, I've been talking to recruits uh, this morning um, on FaceTime during practice, and, you know, hopefully I, I feel bad for the 2020 seniors. There, there's, uh, there's, I don't think there's any way to quantify the number of kids that were affected by this scholarship-wise and opportunity-wise at the, the many different level of schools, and uh, that's – I hate that. And I hope that um, – Maybe the NCAA will allow even those 2020 seniors to come to summer camps this summer, should we be allowed to have those, just so they do have somewhat of an opportunity to, to, to be a late addition. But hopefully it's going to come back to some time. It seems like. I don't know how y'all feel because I'm really not in out in the real world a lot, but it just seems like, I don't know, I just get this feeling that um, – that things are better, um, whether it's herd immunity, whether it's the vaccine, I don't know. Um, but, you know, we've gone three straight weeks here without a positive uh, in our testing and um, just seems like it's better. So, but to answer your question, I just think we've, the lessons we would have learned is, man, adversity comes, we worry about what we can control and we stay as positive as we can and continue to uh, work as hard as you can with the 24 hours you're given. And if you're given another 24 hours, let's be thankful and grateful and, and go back to work on that one too. Coach, I guess you're probably a couple of weeks into some of the high school football now around the state. I mean, have you been able to, uh, your staff been able to get out to some games yet or how, how is that, you know, with the, doing it in the spring as opposed to the fall? I mean, how different is it? Well, unfortunately, we can't go anywhere. We're still under the uh, NCAA dead period. So uh, we, can't, uh, we can't go anywhere to recruit, nor can they come on campus. So everything is just by Zoom and, and uh, watching films thus far. So we'll probably let three or four weeks get under the belt in uh, these high school seasons and then start uh, evaluating a lot of tape. Because we do have some spots left. If we chose to, to use them, we don't have to because of our returners, but um, we'll, we'll start looking at those. But hopefully um, hopefully they'll allow us to at least have uh, access to, to allow kids to come to campus this summer at some point. I won't mention this to uh, Coach McKay yet. don't want to jinx him or anything, but uh, if you look back to the fall, you know, the football team – went pretty much the entire season until that, that first regular season game against Coastal without having a COVID flare up and were able to get 11 games in. And now uh, you're seeing it with men's basketball. They didn't have any games canceled, knock on wood, to this point due to COVID. Is there, you know, is there some similarities between the two? You know, obviously all under the same athletic administration. You know, and if you look across the country, there's very few, if any, teams that have, that have had that same type of success as far as getting games in. Well, I do. I think that starts with uh, with with Ian and uh, his direction and his vision, and and then there's a lot of people that carried out that vision, and um, and of course we're blessed to have uh, the 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 physical structures here to quote have a a bubble, whether it's the La Haye conference room for academics or the indoor for academics or and uh, training table for food where. Um, you're just, you know, as long as, as, as people abide by the bubble principles, they truthfully don't have to be around a lot of people outside this, this bubble. So uh, I think it just starts with the vision, and we were kind of the, I guess, the test run uh, for it, and we had what I would consider to be a successful run with it. Um, and I think probably that Thanksgiving weekend got us a little bit um, before the uh, Coastal game. Luckily, we were able to reschedule that game in a bowl game, which probably was better. Um, more people got to see it. I would like to have been a part of game day, but uh, still glad we got that game in. But uh, so I think it's it, I think it's similar because of just the setup we have here. 
and uh, I think most of our kids were semi-responsible with it, and I would would venture to guess Coach McKay's are probably even more responsible. I know he's uh, the culture he has and he creates and leads is uh, is pretty special, and you know we'll certainly be hopeful and prayerful that. Uh, that they get to Indianapolis with zero uh, issues and are able to finish this season uh, on a high note. Coach, how's everyone looking health-wise at this point uh, in the spring ball? You know, we had some that had surgery that uh, <coughs> that we're holding out a little bit. Uh, Brendan um, is getting very few reps. He probably could, but we're not. Uh, get, getting him in. And Caleb Coleman's in a blue jersey, still, you know, just making sure that that shoulder's 100% uh, before he's in contact of any type. Uh, we did, unfortunately, John Curtis suffer an injury Friday, no, Monday, Monday, and uh, he'll be out for the rest of spring, but we don't think it's anything long term. It's an MCL sprain, but it's a pretty good one. Uh, he'll, he'll be out for the remainder of spring. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got a few nicks and knacks that, uh, that people are out here and there, but for one practice, but nothing that uh, that's the only ones I can think of. Um, you know, obviously, besides uh, those surgeries that we had earlier. Okay, go ahead, John. I was just going to ask with Curtis being out, um, who, who's getting some reps at center? Uh, Bryce Matthews and. Um, you know, we're torn around. Of course, Tom's back. Uh, Bryce is getting a lot of lot of snaps at center. That's something we had planned uh, to do anyway. And we were actually going to give John some reps at guard uh, because he's a little got a little more girth and can hold up a little bit better maybe and uh, get some of these three techniques that we're facing uh, these days. But uh, Bryce is getting uh, quite a few of them and, and then uh, a mixture of people with the uh, with that with the third and fourth group. Coach, back to recruiting, this dead period has been going on for almost, I would say, a year now. Uh, from a recruiting standpoint, how challenging is that to, and you've spoken about this quite a bit, to not being able to get into homes and get a read on the family situation, the dynamics uh, that come with recruiting and getting a sense of a player, you know, not based on what you see on film, but, you know, in the home. And how challenging is that uh, from recruiting for a staff like yours that values uh, the home life and, you know, the character and everything else that comes with it? Very challenging. Very uncertain, um, uncomfortable a bit. And uh, you do the best you can with these Zoom calls and in still involving the same people that we would should we be on the road recruiting. You know, you just uh, – it's just a little – uncomfortable and and uh, you certainly are not as confident as you normally are when you do get on the campus that man have we gotten the right type of kid and the right does he really love to work and love ball chase a standard and understand uh, liberty to the full extent that they could and recruit from a normal recruiting period so it's it's uncomfortable but it you know it's, it is what it is and uh, we'll continue, you know, I get on the phone every single uh, practice day with with six different uh, recruits on the on the FaceTime stuff and and then obviously we try to do some group sessions on Zoom um, with with either me or or different uh, coaches throughout the week. So we're doing the best we can with it, but we sure would like to uh, start getting them to campus soon. I think that's advantageous for us. And since you've gotten here, you've expanded the recruiting staff to, um, you know, whether it be high school relations or, um, you know, and Javon Hubbard as a director of on-campus recruiting. And how much has that helped and how much how vital have they been uh, throughout this process when, as coaches, you can't get there, but they can, you know, watch a lot of film and uh, keep you updated with what's going mm -hmm. on? Well, there's two different dynamics uh, to our recruiting office that, um, that, that I – believe in and one it's the personnel side that um, <clears throat> that I look to have on my desk before I talk to a kid and evaluation from um, the personnel office and uh, the recruiting coach slash coordinator also uh, combined 
So I want to have what what our the, that that's the personnel side of it, and Tim Baggett leads that up with TJ and uh, and James, and Ethan is involved in that too. Some Ethan Johnson. So, but that that is the that is the personnel side. They also everybody in this building is involved in recruiting. Period. You can't work here and not be involved in recruiting. And so that's understood on the on the front end. So, you, but you have that. That is their primary responsibility in recruiting is the evaluation uh, uh, and 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 details on what's going on in the kid's life, whether it's being a, a shoulder surgery, a knee surgery, a um, issue with a coach, or he's transferred and was there issues. So that that personnel and also the the tangibles of what kind of player is he. What do you think? And they're, they they send them to training once a year with with some NFL people on that. So you have that side of it. They also uh, do help with the Zoom calls from time to time. All right. Well, then on the other side of it, you've got the the recruiting operations slash actual recruitment of the kid. Ethan is definitely overseeing that. Javon, uh, Hunter Carson, our uh, Kyrus and our student volunteers, uh, Olivia Jensen, who we just hired. Um, unfortunately, you know, Hunter was huge in that. They, they are the ones that are always on the phone uh, with recruits and bringing it to me and um, you know, and I don't want to jump the gun, but we are losing Hunter. That's disappointing. She's done a remarkable job, but we we wish them well. When it means we're hiring good people, because uh, people are coming after them, and she's moving to a Power Five school to do on-campus recruiting, like she's done here. So we're happy for her, uh, but. Um, uh, you know, so we'll have to replace that spot. So I don't know if I'm making sense, but there's two different dynamics going on, and that second dynamic is also in charge of the recruiting operations, scheduling official visits, coaches travel, uh, all of those things. So uh, I think we have a great setup. I like it's worked for me everywhere I've been, and um, pleased with uh, the amount of support the administration has given us to to fill all those slots. Ed, I saw you jump in. Did you have anything here? Ed Lane? Mm. There we go. My computer was having some technical difficulties with that. Um, Coach, you might have addressed this a little bit earlier, but you'd mentioned so far with COVID and how things have gone for you in the you know the three week stretch of you know very good performance in that regard. Um, concern. How do you balance the concern with that happening? Because you see programs shutting down across the country, but with the reality that what you guys have done so far, and I'll knock on wood for you guys, and you know continue to fingers crossed and prayers and all that, that it's all turned out fairly well so far. That you guys seem to have a good system in place. I'll be dead honest with you. I don't give uh, I don't give it one ounce of my worry. I just I just really I don't even think about it uh, anymore. I get the test results back each week, and if they're negative, man, I'm excited. If there are a few positives, I don't uh, I don't fret uh, or worry. I just make sure number one that uh, they're they're ace they're, they don't have many symptoms and that they're okay. Um, but um, it's just kind of become, un I don't know if this is good, bad, or indifferent, but it's kind of just become part of life, and you just accept uh, that I have zero control over it. And so I just, it doesn't do me one ounce of good to worry about it. Has that been, you know, more of an evolution for you guys as coaches as opposed to players just because of the, the habits you guys have built up and you know, maybe the – the fact that for players, it seems like for them, it's fairly easy. Just you know, do what your do what you guys have them to do, and they'll be successful. Yeah, and I, I and now I will say, uh, I mean, I don't want to sound. It was definitely more worrisome in the season. I mean, I can't well, say that now. This spring, I just I don't find myself worrying about it at all. But you know, I'm not Coach McKay right now either. 
um, uh, or myself getting ready to play a bowl game. Um, so I, I think there's different seasons of life. And this one right now in the spring, I just I don't find myself uh, being, being caught up worried with it uh, really at all right now. Coach, you mentioned you've been uh, watching some TV. What are some shows you're watching right now? Uh, I'm gonna get see people judge me on pretty much everything I think so that's I'm okay with it I'm, I'm I'm accustomed to it but man I tell you my favorite show is Blacklist I love it I think James Spader's like the best actor ever he cracks me up I like that one um, let's see uh, Seal Team I'm a big Seal Team fan love Seal Team uh, I'll watch SWAT, but it's just okay. I think the acting is kind of like Walker Texas Ranger style. Um, but uh, but but I'll I'll watch it. Also, let's see. Um, I like this new show. Uh, my wife said you need to try this. I think you'll like it. And it's a uh, Clarice off of the the Silence of the Lambs movie. It's kind of, kind of uh, spooky a little bit, but like that one. Those are the ones we TiVo, and then I TiVo every NASCAR race, every PGA golf tournament, and the LPGA golf tournament because I, I have something to watch when I do have some time. But I can't think of any other. I think that's the shows that uh, I'm sure there may be a few more. There's a lot on the playlist, but I don't know what they are. I don't, I don't watch them. I think that's more my wife and kids. Excited to see uh, William Byron get that win. Man, that was huge. I talked to he and his pit crew um, uh, after that, and uh, just shoot, man, to get to get that done so early in the season, so that he knows that uh, there's an absolute, almost certain chance that he will be in the chase. I think that's kind of a huge burden off of the way they have that set up that he has off of. I mean, he was running real well last week, also, but uh, I think he's going to have a great year. What about Ricky Stenhouse? you think he's going to get the monkey off his back and find a way to get back to victory lane? You know, I talk to him weekly. Actually, I'm uh, I'm tr I'm helping uh, him uh, and his team a little bit, um, kind of sending them some some thoughts of the week, um, uh, sort of like I do our team. He's always kept up with me, and so we talk weekly. And uh, man, right now he's pleased. You know, he's parring what we would consider to be pars in the golf terminology. Um, you know, he's run in the top 15 in most every race, and he's right around that. And if he stays in that mode and gets a few birdies here and there, you know, there's a good chance you the stats would say that you would make the chase. And so, um, you know, obviously a win would be incredibly nice. But, but you know, the mindset I think has to be, man, let's just let's keep making pars and, and have ourselves in position and – around that top 16 to make the chase. <laughs>